This video is about getting the codes and the software onto your work clock and getting it working. We've got another video on building the casing, the hardware of the word clock and doing all the circuitry. Go check that out if you haven't already. It doesn't matter which order you watch the videos, but this video is on put, purely putting the code onto your Raspberry Pi Pico or the word clock or my, any other microcontroller you're using. <laughs> so I'm holding down the boot select button on my Raspberry Pi Pico and I'm just plugging it into the computer now. Now wait, and this drive um, pops up, RPI, RP2. So now I'm gonna, we need to flash MicroPython onto our Raspberry Pi Pico here. Um, there's many ways you can do this, many tutorials as well. So if you know what you're doing, feel free to do this your own way. But I find the easiest way is through Fonny. So you wanna get Fonny on your, um, on your computer. Um, I'm on a Mac by the way. Fonny is, you can get it on Linux, Windows, Mac, anything. Right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go run, configure interpreter, and then we're going to, on this little drop down menu, MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. And then I'm going to try to detect port automatically. Then install or update MicroPython. MicroPython family RP2. Um, target volume, it's already found RPI, RP2, but if it didn't, you just let the dot drop down menu and look for it, but it's already found that for me. Um, variant, Raspberry Pi Pico WH, and that's the latest version, should get the latest version. Um, install, simple as that, it'll install, and you'll have MicroPython, so I'll just wait for that to be done. Cool, done. So I can close that now. Okay. And then the best way to check this is done, if this doesn't already happen down here in our little shell grapple area, press the stop button up here and you can see this will happen. And that means it's connected and you've successfully flashed the firmware. Next, we need to get the code onto our Raspberry Pi Pico. Again, I'm using Fonny for this, but there's many ways to access the files and put files onto your Pico. Um, so if you want to follow me, follow me. If you've got another way, use that. Up to you. So I'm going to open up a new Google tab and head over to github.com forward slash Google Apps. I'll link, the, I'll link this in the description so you don't have to search this all up. Um, what am I looking for? Oh yeah. Google Apps Word Clock Repository. I'll put this link in the description again. And here are the files. So I'll talk you through these files in a second, but first let's download them. Again, if you're, if you're familiar with Git clone and everything, do it that way. But if you're just following my tutorial, I'll do it the simple way. I'll download the zip. So you press that green code button, download zip. Um, opened up where the zip is. Okay, so I've just found where the zip is downloaded. It's in my desktop. You'll need to locate where you've downloaded that zip and then just unzip it. Right, so now we've got this folder. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Fonny and then I'm going to up here in this file section I'm going to locate where that zip that I just unzipped is. Now if you've not got this here, don't worry, you just go view and tick files. Right, so mine's on my desktop and then here it is. I'm going to go into the folder and you can see I've got these files. Now you don't have to worry about um, these files and this build folder. They're just there if you want to tinker around, maybe edit the user interface, um, etc. So I will release a video on I will release a video on how you can tinker around and um, edit kind of the project to the word clock to make it more your own. Um, there'll be a video. There'll be a video on that. But if you just want to get this word clock working, you don't need any of this. You just need to go into the SRC folder. This is all you need. These files and that www folder is all you need. Um, now a few more things before I upload all these to the to the Pico. Um, we've got some config fi um, files. Now 
if maybe you've not got a coding background, you just want this word clock working, ignore what I'm going to say, leave it as it is. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to demonstrate what you could do. So if you've not bought the full kit and you're not using a Raspberry Pi Pico W, you're using something else, we've got this config file, file here that um, is for an ESP32. We've got the pins here. Just change it to your setup. You'll know what you're doing. Um, same with the Pico, by the way. If, you're, if you used your own pins on the Pico and not followed our tutorial and our set pins, you'd have to change these to what you've chosen. But if you followed our tutorial, then just leave everything. It's fine. Now, we also have another config, config, config Wi-Fi. Now, we're going to set the... Um, word clock up with Wi-Fi later, a simpler way. But if you want to set it up right now, you just go into there and here, you'll have to change that to your Wi-Fi SSID, change this to your Wi-Fi password. Pretty simple. And then obviously you'd have to delete this file, config.json, and rename this config Wi-Fi JSON, config.json. Same if you use any of the other config files. you got to rename it config because that's what the program uses. Anyway, don't worry if you're a bit confused on what I'm talking about. You don't have to do anything in this stage. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select all of this, right click, upload to. So that's uploading it to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Okay, that is now done. Now you can either unplug the word clock and then plug it back in to run the code or you can double click if you're in Fonny still double click main.py and then press this run button up here make sure you've clicked it inside the raspberry pi pico section in here then press run and it'll run it so you'll see the word clock working um and it's not connected to wi-fi so what we do is you can you can do this on your phone or your tablet they're probably easy to do this stage on but I'm doing it on my computer just so I can have all my screen recordings in one place and it's easier to show you. So I open up settings, go to my Wi-Fi settings, and I want to find Google Apps. Here it is. Now this may not be called Google Apps. We've had to kind of hack around to actually make the network name called Google Apps. So if you've got a different variant of MicroPython, then it might not say Google Apps. It might say Pico or something. But fingers crossed it says Google Apps for you. So we press connect. I'll show the password. The password is Google. Oh, I'm not typing. The password is Google Apps. I hope. Right, so it's connecting. Cool. And now head over to your browser on the same device that you connected to Google Apps with. And then you're going to want to type 192.168.4.1. Type that in. Press enter, it'll bring you to this little web page served off the Pico. Um, so here you can control your um, word clock, change the time, brightness, etc. Colours. What we really want to do is connect to Wi-Fi. You can see we're not connected. So we press this Wi-Fi tab up here. And here, SSID and password. We just type in your SSID, SSID um, and then I'll put my password in, update Wi-Fi. And you could look, look at the word clock and it does a little thing to show that it's connected to the Wi-Fi. Right, so now if I reload, that should say connected. Now you can all, now here, is the what is the word clock's IP address, which I'm going to copy, and now if I go over to uh, my Wi-Fi network, my house Wi-Fi, so not Google Apps anymore, I can paste that in there, and now control the word clock without having to go into settings and connect to its Wi-Fi. Now, if you the wi the IP address should stay the same when you unplug it and plug it back in, but if you can't remember it and you can't be bothered connecting to um, its network to find it, then um, 
when you first power on the word clock, it actually sc some scrolling text appears, and that's actually the IP address it's showing you. So you'll want to jot that down and then put it into your browser. So many ways you can find the IP address, but once you've got the IP address, just put it into your browser and you can control the word clock, and you are complete. Hopefully you've understood this tutorial. Leave any questions in the comments if you're stuck and we'll get we'll respond as soon as possible. Hopefully you understood all of that. We have got an article on this if you got a bit confused or lost. Also ask us in the comments if you've got any questions about it and we'll respond as quick as possible. Or someone else might respond. Um, feel free to rewind parts of the video if we went a bit fast. Um, Hopefully your work clock is all working. Yeah. Um, so remember to watch our other video, if you've not already, on building the actual casing of the word clock. And this isn't our only product. You've if you if you like this products like this, you'll probably like our VS Code cheat sheet coaster. and our Raspberry Pi Pico and pinout pin coaster. Yeah. So go check these out. All the links will be in the description and the article link. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.